This is 10 Questions to Cyber Resilience, brought to you by Assurance IT. Released twice per month, every episode brings you one step closer to cyber resilience by hearing how IT leaders are practicing cybersecurity. Resources mentioned in the episode can be found in the show notes. If you're ready to take your cyber resilience to the next level, be sure to subscribe so you can catch every episode. With me today, I've got my friend, uh, Paul Baker of Pluralock. Uh, always a pleasure to sit down with Paul and uh, discuss uh, trends, topics of uh, hot topics conversation in the industry today around cybersecurity. Uh, Paul, I'll let you do a quick intro and we'll get right into our topic of conversation today, which is protecting, protecting the enterprise uh, in and around what we're seeing uh, with AI and how that's going to impact enterprises over the next uh, few years at, at the minimum. So, Paul, go ahead. Hey, so uh, I'm Paul Baker. I'm Director of Cybersecurity at uh, Pluralock, which is a Canadian cybersecurity company. Awesome. Awesome. So, Paul, let's uh, start the the uh, my questions here. I've got a question I want to ask uh, to begin is, what are the potential risks of an organization who are using AI, such as ChatGPT, without the proper safeguards in place, uh, especially when it comes to sensitive information? Yeah, so, I mean, the... The, the problem that companies are facing is, is really just the, the meteoric rise of these tools. Right? Chat GPT went from, from zero to 100 million users in two months, which is just insane. Um, and companies can't keep up. And because of that, they've, they've realized that there are challenges involved in these things. Samsung, for example, they had a, a leak back in, I think it was April, um, and they banned the use of, of Chat GPT. Um, the country of Italy banned the use of generative AI, which is, which is awesome. How. <laughs> in the country do that um canada has ongoing privacy investigations around around these tools as well um so there's these big issues and as we're seeing increasingly now these large language models these generative ais they're they're under attack and these attackers are clever right there was a, a, a story i read recently about training data being exposed just by sending one word over and over and eventually the ai just blurted out a whole bunch of training data um and really it comes down to lack of transparency Right. How is data used? How is it installed? How is it incorporated into the models? Things like that. So there's all of this um, this risk for a company. And really, the risk falls into into um, four categories. So you've got compliance, um, private data leaks, full foul of regulations like PIPEDA in Canada, GDPR in Europe, CCPA in California. Um, and then there's industry specific ones as well. Right. You've got HIPAA for healthcare data. You've got FDIC for, for financial data in the, in the US and so on. So there's this compliance risk for a company. Um, there's a liability risk, right? If you're knowingly releasing this data to a third party, that's going to leave you open to some, uh, some, some significant liability issues outside of any of those regulatory ones. Um, there's is risks around governance, right? It's so difficult to get a clear picture of where your data's going, um, how these tools are being used, how data is being used, how it's being incorporated, who could it be shared with, with these strange new attacks that are going on. So you don't have any of those, you know, those governance things in place. So there's big risk around that. Um, and, and really it's around competitive risk, right? There's, there's risk of loss of intellectual property, um, strategic information about your organization. You know, you're, you're asking an AI to, to help you prepare your next five-year business plan. There's probably other companies that would really love to know that kind of information. Um, Absolutely. So there's things that could cause material harm to your business as well. So those are kind of the risks really that um, that come with just saying, hey, go and use these tools. Right. And I like what you said about the meteoric rise of ChatGPT. You know, a couple of months, couple, you know, 100 million users signed up. That's that's a lot of risk that's put up front or, or put into a, a platform. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're, we're seeing people kind of backpedal a little bit and, and step back and, and ask a lot of questions about you know, the use of it and the use of all these tools. That leads me to my next question. So how do the companies strike a balance when we leverage capabilities of, of AI? Like it, it, there has to be a, some kind of balance or a mid ground, middle ground to protect the sensitive data. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, I think, I think everyone is starting to realize that there are, there are potentially huge productivity gains from using these tools. Right, so companies want to use them. They want to. They want to stay competitive. Um, employees are using them to do company work. Right, it's making their their life easier. It's making them more effective. Um, uh, but they're providing company data by by using these tools. Right, either inadvertently or just they don't really understand where this where this stuff is going. Right, they're using AI to summarize a long document or, or write an email or proofread something or critique it or analyze 
and data sets, all these things that, that these generative AIs are really, really good at. And the issue is that data is flowing into these tools and, and strong, companies are really struggling to, to stop or control it. And the problem we have is that you, you can't simply block access. Right, people want to use these, and as we see time and time again, certainly in the security side of things, if you put barriers in place, people find ways to get around them. And in the in the case of things like ChatGPT, you ban access to it. They're just going to get um, they're going to use their own devices. They can use their own logins because they want to use these tools. And so the issue is is how do you say, well, okay, use these tools, but use these tools safely? All right? How do you put those guardrails in place that that let you have acceptable use for for these tools that people understand the kinds of data that they can or and cannot share with these tools um, and not just have this this free for all so it's yeah it's it's a very difficult job to try and strike that balance and and there's a few approaches that you can take with that that i'm sure we'll we'll cover later on in uh, in our chat yeah and, I, and like what you said i mean the productivity gains i mean are obvious right i mean it, it, there there is obviously a benefit of using these ai tools at some level i mean especially you know when it comes to writing documents or summarizing stuff i definitely agree i mean uh, we're, we're i think we're all uh, beneficiaries of it or, or victims you know uh, of using it to some extent uh and at the same time we have to we have to personally have uh, you know the accountability or, or, or i think responsibility when using these tools and then of course that transcends into the organization and to your point i mean a lot of people can circumvent um their enterprise perimeter and, and use the yep. tools regardless and i think that's where we need to instill some kind of level of responsibility at the individual level uh and that's one thing that we we're not seeing enough of in my opinion so i think we need to we need to do a little bit a little bit more in terms of educating the users, not only from the benefits, but also from the risk associated, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It leads into my next question, because we talk about like, you know, what are the ethical considerations, right? Should companies prioritize, like when, they, when they're implementing these types of tools, right? What kind of ethical considerations should companies prioritize? to prevent unintentional disclosure of proprietary or sensitive information, because we're all dealing with a lot of PII or, or, or sensitive information or even intellectual property at some level, right? So, so what, what, what should we be doing to, to make sure that we prioritize these? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think the, I think the first thing that the company is and individuals need to consider is, is whether an AI tool is even appropriate for what they're trying to do. I think there's this kind of, um, you know, I have a, I have a hammer and that's what I'm going to use for, for every job now. Um, you know, just because you, just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should. So I think that's the first point is, is to really say, do I actually need to use some kind of AI tool to to accomplish this task? Um, and then once you, once the answer to that is, is yes, because it often is, um, I think you need to, you need to assume that, that any data that you share with these tools can and will be uncovered at some point. Right. I think I I think we're going to see that more and more as as people get more familiar with with crafting prompts to try and reveal the data behind these models. Um, no one can really tell you how these models are built, um, how it can be exploited, how your data is safe. It's it's a really kind of gray area in terms of that that visibility into data. Um, so so taking those two things to account, I think the question should always be. What harm can be done either to an individual or to an organization if the information that I'm sharing with these tools is in the public domain? Um, I mean, really, it's the same. It's the same as these tools for, for any other tool, right? When You're it right. comes to data, just on a much more massive scale. And the problem that you have with AI is that is that it's no longer just that one piece of data that you leaked. Right? They're they're pulling together all of this data from all of these different sources and and they're creating creating links between what would otherwise be fairly unrelated bits of information. So you're not necessarily just leaking um, data that you have. This is being combined with data from lots of different sources and is potentially painting perhaps an untrue picture about someone. So it's yeah, yeah definitely definitely some uh, some interesting ethical considerations. I, I like what you said about the fact that just because you have a hammer doesn't mean you you need to use it, right? And I think that's one of the things that people have kind of like ran towards. And I you know we we look at some some university students who are you know using it daily um, to to help with their with their projects, research projects, and papers and so on. And I think it's uh, it's becoming um, a bit of a lack of a better term a crutch for a lot of people. And the reliance on it is becoming overwhelming. And I think this is where we need to step back a bit. I, listen, I, I'm a big promoter of AI. I, th I think at some point we're going to have to you know, ad adopt it in a, in a very ethical and a very responsible way. Um, but at the end of the day, we can't just 
put heavy reliance on it. We need to uh, yes, we need to use true. it responsibly, right? And I know the term is you know with, with great you know with great power you know it comes with great responsibility, and I think this is where you know the big concern is: uh, how do we use it for good, and how do yep. we use it for, for for the benefit of individuals and and the enterprise? Um, and, and I think and I think there's and I think there's risks around people just blindly trusting what these tools are coming back with in terms of responses as well you know we've we've seen we've yes. seen them just just making things up and it's and it's you know to then sort of copy and paste that and assume that is now the truth um because you heard it from an ai yeah yeah that's kind a good point one. that's a good point yes uh and um so so we here at, i mean assur at assurance it one of the things we talk about to our clients is when we when we do adopt a solution we do we do promote the, the solution or we we suggest or recommend the solution has some form of ai embedded or some notion of that because at the end of the day we need to be able to use or leverage the technology as it's emerging into our day-to-day -day life I, I think we need ai at a certain level to help alleviate the fact that we're lacking resources lacking time and lacking you know xyz um but again is how do we know that to your point how do we know that the ai that we're actually using is giving us information that's accurate so you know in your in your opinion in your opinion or in your experience how do, how do you how do you check what what you, what the ai is doing is actually working you know is there is there measures in place that we can put can we can, can we put milestones to, to ensure that we're actually getting what we're expecting from this, from this, you know, technology. I know it's not an easy question, Paul, but I'm just curious to what your answer would be. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's the same as doing any research, right? Check your, check your sources, use multiple sources. You know, if you, if you have kind of a, a generalist question, don't just ask one model, right? Go and go and ask this, the question to a number of different models and see what they will come back with. And if, and if there's kind of, um, if they all agree, then, you're probably okay, but chances are you're going to come back with a bunch of very disparate um, answers. So you still have to apply the sort of the the, the, the squishy AI between your your ears to, to kind of interpret these responses and and see if it makes sense. Um, particularly if it's if you're not just asking it to do fairly fairly mundane tasks, right? Converting data into JSON, whatever that's pretty straightforward. But if you if you use it for you know more sort of strategic analysis type things, then yeah, you need to you need to look at that response. You need to think about it and, and say, you know, does this pass the 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 make sense test? Very good, very good. I'm a big fan uh, of of your organization, Paul, and, and what Pluralock has been doing for the for for the long time here. But I'd like you to maybe talk specifically about what you guys are doing. Um, so. A lot of companies I see or people I see take they, they take you know a block of data they dump it in Chat GPT and then they try and crunch you know either code from it or they try and do something that's going to make you know their day or lives easier, but oftentimes they're taking a lot of sensitive data and they're putting it in there. Uh, how do you how do you stop an organization or, or you know, can you tell us how you guys are doing it so that we can inadvertently uh, you know stop, prevent data leaks or inadvertently sharing data that's probably sensitive and shouldn't be put into AI models? Yeah, so I mean you can. Sort of the, the general the general way that organizations should adopt AI tools in a responsible way um, relies around really having three areas. So there needs to be policies, there needs to be governance, and there needs to be enforcement. And policy and governance is reasonably straightforward, right? You can you can write policies on acceptable tools, acceptable use, the kinds of data that can be shared, etc. Um, when it comes to enforcement, that's where it gets difficult because how do you know what needs to be enforced? Um, we have a background in, in things like data loss prevention tools. We have a background in AI. So we kind of understand the space pretty well. Um, and so, so our approach was to, to come up with a, a smart DLP. So specifically designed for use with, with generative AI tools like ChatGPT. And the smart, any kind of DLP that you have in this, in this space really needs to do a number of different things it's got to allow the company to to leverage those productivity gains from generative ai right you can't just say you can't do it um but you've got to stop that delivery of, of that sensitive data before it reaches the ai okay you can't you can't do it once you get a response back say, oh actually i didn't mean to send you that you've got to you can't let that data get there in the first place um but you also can't eliminate the ai's ability to to provide usefulness Right, simply redacting data um, or blocking prompts really removes the usefulness of these tools because they don't understand the context of the data that you're sending them anymore. 
Um, but then outside of the technical side of things, you also need to, to add transparency to this AI use to help that governance piece, right? What prompts were sent to the AI? What data was shared with them? What did the AI come back with? And those are surprisingly difficult things to track. Right? Yeah. Who's, who's actually talking to these tools? How are they using? What kind of stuff is being sent? Um, and then ultimately, it has to also not put any onus on the user. Right. It's got to be invisible as far as they're concerned. You can't have users having to redact their own data or, or do things like that. So we came out with a with a solution called um, Prompt Guard, and what that does is it sits effectively in line. So an end user would would talk to Prompt Guard either directly or through APIs and stuff like that. And we look at what they're trying to ask the the AI, and we we look for sensitive data, PAI all those kinds of fun things. Um, and if we see it, we, we can actually take that data out and drop in a fake value of the same context. So we would take a real name and replace it with a fake name. We would take a real email address and replace it with a fake email address, credit card numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we send that off to, to a tool like ChatGPT. So we keep the context of all of that data. So your, your query is still, is still valid. It still makes sense from the AI's point of view. OK, so it's able to process that and give you an answer back. When we receive that answer from the from the AI tool, um, we then take all of that fake data out that we gave it and we drop the real data back in and present it back to the end user. So we do this inline um, fake data replacement. So again, you, you then that allows you to hit those points of, of that smart DLP, right? They can leverage the gains from AI because the context of the data remains. Um, we prevent the data ever reaching the AI. There is zero risk that that data can and it's be non-intrusive, like you said. It's data. it's in it's in line, uh, frankly. It's it's in line, um, but it gives you that governance, right? Because we're because we're looking at that data, we can tell you this is what the user asked us to do. This is exactly what we asked the AI to do. This is what we got back. This is what we told the user. So you know at every step of the of the process exactly what's happened, exactly what da what data has been transferred. So you have that overall governance, that that ability to prove that that you didn't leak some data or something like that. Interesting. Yeah, I, I like that. That, that, that. That's precisely why I wanted to have this conversation because I saw what you guys were doing. And I think more organizations need to adopt those, those that governance, the policies. And of course, if there's technology to, to safeguard uh, whatever data is you know, being sent out. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, policy and governance, super important. Right, put can't be shared. Which tools can be used? And people need to be aware of those. Right, if if someone is trying to use a tool that isn't allowed, they need to be blocked or made aware that they can't use it. Um, governance, right? Again, you've you've got to be able to know what's happening with these tools. What are we sharing with the outside world? What's the because that's risk to your company at the end of the day. Hundred percent. So, kind of having these these things in place, um, you know. There are some sample um, AI usage policies out there. I, I mean, I have one that I can make available to people if they're interested. You know, it's 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 you've got to start somewhere. Yep, um, I totally and, agree. And I, I think side of things is always the easiest part. And, and ed education, of course, it starts with education and awareness, right? At the at the at the individual level, I, I think I think more and more we're realizing that the biggest risk is is really the people that are inside the organization. I mean, technology is technology; it'll do what it needs to do, but. You know, if you've got thousands of employees, those are, you know, thousands of potential entry points or, or risk points in your organization. And if you can't educate the people it, properly. It is. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and I mean, and it's not always, it's not always a deliberate process. Absolutely not. Right. Yeah. If you're, if you're a keen, if you're a keen copy paster, <laughs> right. How many, how many times have you pasted something into an email and realized that what you thought was in the clipboard wasn't what was in the clipboard? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. In an email, that's great. You just don't hit the send button. But if you but if you you know if you if you paste and hit enter quickly to something like chat GPT, you're done. That data is it's gone, gone, right? That's it's that's, gone. That's, that's their data now. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh well uh, I, I'd like to ask one more question, Paul. Just so I mean, kind of summarize, right? Some of the best practices. You you've talked a lot about you know really good things here, beneficial things for the end user enterprise. If you had to sum, sum it up and give us some best practices or guidelines that, that organizations you're seeing are adopting uh, to secure the utilization of such tools, generative AI tools like ChatGPT, give me some, some best practices high level uh, so we can summarize this for, for the audience here. Yeah, so I mean, in the I think the first thing organizations need to do is, is try and understand if it's being used and how they're being used. Right, so find out what are people trying to do, why are they trying to use these tools, what problems they're trying to solve, um, and and then consider those in in the the view of do we need AI to do that, 
or can we do this in some other way that that doesn't expose that potential risk there often the answer is yeah we need these tools right they they just they're so good at doing the good things that they do um so learn, once you understand that get your policy in place right what is acceptable ai policy and then you should make sure that you try and enforce it as much as possible so block access to unauthorized tools right if um if chat gpt is your your ai of choice then don't let people access all of the other ones. Um, but also consider what what tools are AI behind them that you don't necessarily know about. You know, you look at some of these, you know, grammar type tools, proofreading tools, right? A lot of those are using these AI engines in the back end. Yeah. So find out from them how that data is being used, how it's being stored, where it's being kept, is it being used to train models, things like that. Those are the kinds of questions that you need to be asking um, the, the providers of these AI tools. Right, really understand um, how they can guarantee your data is is going to be. Well, I say guarantee. No one really guarantees anything in <laughs> security <laughs> anymore, do they? Uh, but how do they, how do they know your data is, is going to be kept as safely as possible um, if they're keeping it at all? And then, yeah, just um, kind of lock things down. There's yep. a, there's always a uh, uh, there's always seems to be an approach in in companies to just say, you know what, do everything and we'll restrict it as we need to. Um, it needs to be the other way around, right? It's yeah. got to be. It's got. You've got to adopt that kind of least privilege approach to, um, to this as well, as you would with any other security discussion, right? Let people do the minimum, and if they have compelling use cases as to why they need to use another tool or other types of data, then begin to open that up from that point. Yeah, least privilege, I think, is a, is a great approach. I think it's kind of a blanket approach. Least privilege, trust, verify, of course, trust but verify, of course. Yeah. Uh, and ask ask yourself the question if these tools are really necessary for for the job function that you're in. Uh, so, Paul, I want to thank you. Uh, this has been an enlightening conversation for me. I'm hoping the viewers like it as well. Uh, it sounds as if you've done your homework when it comes to protecting the enterprise relative to what AI has to offer. So, again, I want to thank you for your time today. It's always a pleasure and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, Richie. Great to talk to you again.